All right, Jesse on Fire, welcome back to the channel. We're gonna talk about this Stefan Bonnert video that people keep sending me, this uh, this meltdown that he's having at a hospital looking for treatment. Now, I am going to show the video. I keep on trying to do the video and I keep starting over because I tangent so much just because this is a very close topic. I know a lot about this. And uh, what we're talking about, of course, is opioid addiction. Like, that's what you're actually looking at. He's an opioid addict, 100%. So. Anyway, I promise I will put the video in. I just, I, I can't think straight to where I want to structure it in the video because I just want to talk, tell you guys what you're actually looking at and and send my my best to this guy. And you know, in, in the event that he sees this or anybody who knows him sees this, I can help him with this. You know what, I'll just talk about that on this video. So anyway, uh, if you like the content, subscribe and ring the bell. But what, so what you're looking at right there is you're looking at an opioid addict. I'm at Henderson Hospital and they're gonna arrest me. They won't treat me because I get prescribed oxycodone 10 milligrams and I got it filled a few weeks ago. Anyway, last week when I broke my vertebrae pro wrestling off the top rope, since I got those filled. Sir, you're not allowed to record at a hospital. We don't give you permission. Why not? Permission. Why not? No, I never went to a hospital. I never went to a hospital. I went to a doctor's office, Dr. Steven Standers, 2020 Palomino Lane, bone and joint specialist. My orthopedic surgeon is 17 years, got a great relationship with him. That's why I go to him instead of going to the emergency room first. I'm coming to get treatment for a broken vertebrae, a fractured vertebrae. I'm coming to get treatment for a fractured vertebrae. What's he doing? He's gonna, yeah, he's gonna come choke me out. Like, come on, dude. Okay, now if you've never been addicted to opioids, what's incredible to me actually is when I am op when I talk openly about opioid addiction, it's it is unbelievable how many people in the comments are like, I've dealt with that, I've dealt with that, I've dealt with that, I've dealt with that, I've dealt with that. And the reason for it is really simple, man. Biologically, people fall into one of three categories when it comes to opioids, and this is this is non-negotiable. Either People take opioids and they get super sick and they throw up, or they get super tired and they fall asleep, or they get energy from them. And if you're in category three, you're an addict. If you if you can, that those are the, obviously the ones that like them. They feel energetic. They're like, all right, you know, this is usually a you know, this is an activity I hate doing, but right now it feels great. And so try to think about that. Like literally, it takes any activity that you hate and it turns it into the most fun thing you've ever done. The, be the just utter bliss. So like in the movie uh in the movie The Devil's Advocate when, you know, Al Pacino is making his final pitch to Keanu Reeves to come over to the devil side and and he's like, "What are you pitching me?" And he goes, "How about bliss? How about bliss on tap?" And I remember when I was younger watching that I'm like, "That's the best he's got, bliss." And when I got older <laughs> and I understood what he's offering is here, you could feel like you're on uh your first two Norcos forever. And that's a hell of a fucking pitch right there. You know, it makes everything perfect. That's the only way you can even describe it. It makes everything perfect. The problem is that uh, that's not how it remains. It's it's the ultimate mousetrap. You're like, God, I feel great. I feel clean. You know, I love my wife more. It makes me want to do the dishes and I love going to work. I love the, the people that I'm working with, I love it. It's great. I'm nicer. I'm better. It's a trap. It is literally like, I, I've thought about this a million times, like if, if, this, if this experience here is a simulation, the, the opioid thing is absolutely brilliant. It's like, here you go, here, let's just see how you do it. This is like a series, this is some kind of simulation to test your decision process and, and whether you can think long term or whether you can actually, you know, take a shortcut versus doing the hard thing because that's the ultimate shortcut. That's exactly what they are. It's a shortcut to feeling good. You can make yourself feel that good. You just have to work for it. You know, you have to make yourself uncomfortable to earn that comfort. Where with the pills, you can just have it on tap. And very soon, you're not, it's not a matter of like bliss on tap, it's a matter of, hey, guess what? If you don't get your pills, you wanna know what's on the other side of that? Imagine hell on earth, the worst thing you've ever felt in your entire life. So like the exact opposite of that. It's actually, no, the withdrawal's 100 times worse. It's like, you know, this feels great, bliss on tap. The inverse when you go through withdrawal is the sickest you've ever been 
times a thousand. It's like you can't even like this. If you've never gone through, you can't even you can't even fathom what it's like. If you've got you know if you've cold turkeyed off, I don't know you know a hundred plus milligrams of uh, oxycodone or, or hydrocodone. If you've if you've cold turkeyed on a hundred milligrams a day or over, then you can start talking about really understanding like the worst thing ever. Now two hundred milligrams, three hundred milligrams. I, I mean, so or fentanyl or heroin, right? Things like that, you know, those are, <laughs> again, it's like one of those things where if you were like, hey, would you prefer to go through withdrawal off of 200 milligrams of oxycodone a day, cold turkey with no, with no medical assistance? Like, so no, no like herbal help or no like, you know, no nothing, just cold turkey and you're, you're gonna deal with it on your own. Or would you rather, feel what it's like to die of COVID. Like, so go through the last, cause it'll about, that, that'll last about three days. Would you rather spend it doing that? Or would you rather feel what it feels like the last three days of your life if you were gonna die of COVID? You won't die, but you're gonna feel exactly the same as a person in the last three days of life on COVID. I guarantee you 100 out of 100 people who have ever gone through that will choose the COVID, 100%. They'll just like, they'll just be like, well, it's literally impossible that it's worse than that. Like it, no matter how much this hurts, it can't be worse than that. So I'll take the COVID. So, you know, the only the only thing I can even think of that might be in the conversation where you'd be like, I guess I'll take the withdrawal is like, would you rather be kidnapped by a drug cartel and tortured to death or go through the withdrawal? You're like, I mean, I guess I'll take the withdrawal. But that's, I mean, like that's the level you're talking about to even be in the conversation of anything being as bad as that is. And so you, when you watch the video, think about it through that lens. Okay, so what he's doing there, what he's actually doing at the hospital is he's trying to get more pills. And if he's unsuccessful, that's what he's looking at. You're basically like, I'm either gonna convince this, I, I'm in a completely, like I'm not myself, my brain is fried because I've been doing these drugs for so long because it doesn't just make you feel good and then you know you, you, go, you go through a hard deterioration of your brain, your decision process, etc. Now, some people have a higher bottom, like there are some people where those kinds of drugs will literally take them into the gutter. Like there's just, it'll take them into the gutter. They'll, they'll be in a trash can, you know, and they'll do, they'll get a hit of fentanyl or whatever it is. And they'll be the happiest person on earth with no, no acknowledgement at all that they've lost every single thing in their life. Like, and they're still just the way that I described bliss on tap. They will feel that bliss in a parking lot behind a dumpster. Okay. And there are other people where if they start losing things, they, they get fired from their job, something like that, something recoverable. That is their like, holy shit, I'm, I'm like, I'm, my life is falling apart, I need to quit, okay? That, by some fucking miracle, is what I was. And, but some people do not have that mechanism and they will literally destroy their entire life on these things. And so, if I'm gauging Bonnert on that video, he's a dumpster guy. You know, and that's not like, I'm telling you, it's like a biological wiring thing. I don't think that it's like, I, that's my opinion is, is there are just some people that are wired for the fucking gutter, you know, like where there is no bottom for them. At least the, the bottom is so low that they will destroy everything in their life beforehand. And so what you're looking at there is a person who is halfway in the gutter mentally already. And he has this thing, he has to be successful. Like he has to be successful. And he goes in there looking like a sniveling drug addict. And the thing that he needs to be successful at is getting a doctor to prescribe him opioids in the current opioid crisis where doctors are so discouraged against this, you know, against prescribing opioids that the likelihood of success is insanely low, insanely low. And if you watch the video, when he specifically says, I have a great relationship with my, with my orthopedic surgeon, but I came here because of blah, blah, blah. No, that means your orthopedic surgeon is not writing him a script, okay? You don't, like, whatever whatever your normal avenue of getting pills is not there. That's why you're at this other, do other hospital. And probably, if I was gonna guess, because again, I, you know, this is I, not inexperienced in this area, my guess is he was probably all, buying them on the street also, and if you're buying pills on the street, here, anybody who knows what's up, what am I gonna say? If he's buying pills on the street, what's he buying, right? What's he buying? Is he buying oxycodone? Is he buying Norcos? Or is he buying fentanyl pressed to look like it? He's, he's addicted to fentanyl is what he's probably addicted to. And so whatever source he had there dried up, whatever it is, his source is dried up. And so he's on the, I mean, that's why he's so hysterical. 
Like, he's losing his mind because he's going to be tortured to death <laughs> if he's unsuccessful. And so, he gets a pass from me as far as this could, like, but he's at a point right there where he's either going to figure out a way to quit and try to get it together or he's not going to make it. I can tell you that right now. Like, I can tell you that, I can tell you that right now. He's at the figure it out or you're not going to make it. And when I say not make it, he's going to die. Like, he's going to die of an overdose. And because when you're fucking around with fentanyl, dude, which inevitably, if a person, if he's, if he's in a place where he would go behave that way, you think he wouldn't take fentanyl knowing it was fentanyl? I mean, of course he would. And so as soon as someone gets to the fentanyl level, you are on borrowed time. Like you're gonna need to quit or you're gonna get a bad batch or you're gonna fucking overdose yourself on accident because that stuff is, you can literally, I mean, like, you know, using this like this fucking meringue, like I don't think I could pinch enough, like a, a small enough piece of this like into powder to represent how little of actual fentanyl you would take if you're doing it responsibly. You need to scale. Like, I know a guy who told me that he bought he bought fentanyl on purpose. One time, he snorted an amount that he said he can't even exaggerate how tiny it was, and he ended up in the ER, and he almost died. This stuff is so potent, it's unreal. And so you think about that, and you have some guy fucking, you know, using a mixer in his, in his, ba you know, his fucking bathtub to press fake pills out of it. And the difference between, you know, this is how much you need in each pill, and you just killed this guy is minuscule. I don't even know how they do it, to be honest with you. Like, I don't, I don't, you know, I have no idea how they could keep from, you know, accidentally juicing up one of those doses to where it's too much and it knocks, as a matter of fact, they probably do. That's probably why so many fucking people die from this shit. But so, anyway, here's, here's what I know to be true, okay? So if anybody knows Bonnert, if anybody knows Stefan Bonnert, if you care about him and you wanna help him kick, you can go to Mexico and you can do this stuff called Ibogaine. And it's a really super, super heavy psychedelic. And you'll avoid the withdrawal Okay, like, I don't know, it's some kind of magic shit where you do this, you do, I begin, it's this insanely, insanely crazy strong experience the last 13 hours. You'll just lay in a bed and you'll trip your fucking balls off for 13 hours, but you won't go through physical withdrawal and the entire experience is an audit of your entire life. It'll change your life. Like it'll, it will, or at the very least, it'll show you who you are and it has the highest success rate of getting people off opioids of any other treatment in the world. It costs $10,000. $10, so if you're friends with Bonner and you want to help him, that is how you help him. Because where he's at right now, that is the only thing that's going, I'm telling you, dude, like, or at the very least, it's 10 times more likely to succeed than, uh, than just sticking him in a detox facility and then, you know, crossing your fingers. So, um, See, I fucking knew it. I, I, where the hell am I gonna fit putting this? You know what, actually? No, I can't do it over because he's, you have to be able to hear him. I have no idea where I'm gonna put the actual Bonnard video, but uh, maybe I'll just do bits and pieces. It's fucking hard to watch, dude. But anyway, if Bonnard, if you see this or anybody who knows Bonnard sees this, my email is in the description or actually shit, if anybody who has an opioid problem sees this and you wanna know more about the Ibogaine, Believe me, I have no financial stake in this whatsoever. This is a thing that I did. And that shit is out of my life completely. So, uh, yeah, someone else told me about it and uh, it works, you know? I used to think that being a high functioning, per like a person who can do that stuff and still be successful in your life, like I thought that was like, well, there is, I mean, there's a, there's a way of looking at it where it's like, that's obviously much better than being a gutter person. But the other way, you at least have a gauge of whether or not that stuff's damaging your life. Where if you're a high functioning drug addict, you don't have any measurement for it. Like you're just kind of like, well, what? Like I'm number four in the company, dude. Like what this, you know, I'm number four, like I'm number four in the country. What, what do you want? And if someone's like, hey dude, if you weren't on those things, you would be number one by by thirty percent over the next place person, and you're like, yeah, but I feel amazing. <laughs> like what? You also forget who you are. You don't even remember your personality. 
So like as an example, when I used to take pills, I'm not funny at all. Like, you know, if you think I'm a funny guy, not funny on pills. There's nothing funny about me. I'm a, I'm, you know, I, I, I understand, man. Like, I'm a fucking pussy when I take pills. Now, I'm a lot of things. A fucking pussy ain't one of them. So, it's another big incentive for me to never, ever, ever take them. But, uh, but yeah. So, I feel for the guy. I would love to help. I really, I'm being totally serious. Anybody, as a matter of fact, I'd love to help anybody. Anybody who has this issue and wants to know more about that, I can tell you all about it. So, hit me up. My email's in the description. And, uh, yeah. We can talk. Anyway, that's what I got. Peace.